Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our monthly training webcast here at NCSI. I'm John Bartz with Network Consulting Services, and this month's topic is Uncovering Rogue Databases with Imperva's Database Activity Monitoring Solution. With me today, Brian Hodzik and Robert Kemeny, who will be running through this demonstration. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Sounding great there. Uh, and feel free to use the Q&A function throughout today's training, and we'll tackle those questions uh, as we go along. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Brian and Robert, the floor is yours. Take it away. All right. Thanks, John. Um, just to repeat what John said, uh, everyone's on mute. We can't hear you, so please use that uh, Q&A section. Um, I'll be monitoring it as we go through. Just please ask questions, and uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, I'd like to introduce Robert Kemeny. Um, he's one of our purpose specialists here, and he's going to be talking about um, uncovering rogue database uh, activity with our database activity monitor. So, uh, Rob, thanks for joining us today. Sure, I'm excited. This will be a good way to, within a few quick, easy steps, to uncover hidden risks. All right, I uh, just want to quick talk about uh, some of the other uh, partners that we have. Uh, today we're talking about Imperva, um, but we specialize in, in many other vendors as well, as well as Avanti and Forcepoint, Palo Alto Network, CyberArk, ServiceNow, CrossMatch, Veeam, Digital Defense, VMware, and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, we do the same kind of trainings with those other uh, vendors as well. So please, uh, you know, check out our YouTube channel or our website for uh, more training webinars like us. Um, today it's going to be very console heavy. We don't uh, want to show a lot of PowerPoint. So uh, uh, let's kind of take it away. Great. Thank you, Brian. Um, today I want to really get into the console and, and, and talk about um, – maybe this uh, unforeseen risk, right? A, a lot of companies are aware of where their structured data should reside, what servers, what databases are there. But in today's day and age, when we have a, a lot of um, collaboration happening between uh, departments within your organization or through consultants or vendors, sometimes that data can end up being replicated uh, to an uncatalogued server or uncatalogued database. So today we really want to talk about discovering that that hidden risk and, and mitigating it with Imperva's database access management solution and their secure sphere suite. Yeah, so you know more about that problem, uh, knowing where your sensitive data is, whether that's PII, PCI, HIPAA, et cetera, you know, a lot of times it's easiest for, for us to say, well, this database contains incredibly sensitive data. Let's pay a lot of attention to it. Um, how many times does a developer make a copy of a database and put it on their machine or put it on a test machine or something like that that we don't know about? So we need to be able to have a good understanding of the things we don't know about. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. Perfect. Uh, we're going to start off with some object configuration within SecureSphere and, and quickly move from there into our scan configuration and some of the features that are available in that uh, config and then talk about the results of those scans and how to accept them, and then mitigate the risk of those um, databases and that, that newly discovered data. So I'd like to, to jump right into the console, <clears throat> and we'll get logged into our Secure Sphere console. Robert, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, demo environment you're running here? Like, you know, what kind of version, what products we're running, et cetera? Absolutely. So we're using uh, Secure Sphere version 12, and, and I'm on patch 50. Uh, there is a, a couple of patches that need to be applied to be up to date in our environment. And in our environment, we have a, a couple of SQL servers, one of them that we know about, and you can see here in our, our site tree from our console that we have um, some SQL and Oracle services that are, that are identified and configured in here for um, um, protection, right? We have all of our applied policies, uh, our web application firewalls, our network validation policies that have been configured for these because these are the ones that we know of and that we're aware of. So I already understand that the data is in here. Now I, I'm, I'm worried about that developer that made a copy of the database, or I'm worried about servers that I don't know about. How can I solve that problem? Great question. So we're going to start off within our um, global objects tab, and we're going to go ahead and set up uh, our IP group to know about the, the segments and IPs that we're interested in. So you might have a uh, server subnet. We'll create one of those here, and we'll go ahead and add in the IPs or the blocks that we're interested in. Now, from our dropdown, there are three options here. You can do a single IP, a range of addresses, and then also um, in the CIDR notation, CIDR notation, a complete network. Uh, in our environment, let's say that we were interested in a particular range. So we can go ahead and enter that here. Uh, this might be uh, within where you know your servers are or, or maybe outside um, in a different segment that you're worried about securing up. We can put those IP ranges in here. 
And we always save after we've made a configuration change. Now our server subnet object will be available as we move through our configuration. So this is the first step in getting things set up. We'll move from our setup tab to our data classification tab and choose scan management. Uh, in your environment, if you've already classified your data and had some scans running, these data classification scans are really kind of the meat. This is where it's going to tell you uh, about that PHI or that PCI information that you need to, to protect. We're going to add a new type of scan here, a, a service discovery scan, so that we can find out uh, what in our environment is, is hidden or that we don't know about. <clears throat> we'll give that a title. And under the dropdown, uh, if you have multiple sites defined, it's important that you pick the one that you you're want to apply this scan to. And we're going to pick our NCSI site. Once that new scan is created, then in the window on the right-hand side, we'll have our configuration within that scan. And there are a couple important uh, notes here. The chop check box or radial button there, automatically add discovered servers to secure your configuration, is something that you'd want to check later on down the road when, when you've kind of matured your environment and, and know that when you do find something that you automatically want to protect it. For our, our example, we're going to allow us to manually review those so we can talk about what those settings are and how they uh, affect what the changes that you make here. Um, we have our IP group dropdown that we need to go ahead and add in that object that we created, and we'll select it here, our server subnet that we're interested in. And if we think that there may be some um, existing servers in our server groups, maybe we had a, um, a database uh, server group IP range that we had configured before. If we, if we want to scan that again, we can to make sure that there are, they haven't changed things, there aren't new databases, new instances popping up, or, or, or uh, that the ports have changed, or things like that. Uh, Imperva out of the box supports uh, more than 20 different database types here, and you can see that those service types are listed, and we can check them or uncheck them if we uh, don't need to spend the, the extra CPU cycles on scanning for those, or if we know specifically what's in our environment. Uh, really important is this advanced configuration tab where we can set things like resolving the host name, uh, resolving the uh, operating system and database versions if we add some credentials in. But this box here, the use enhanced scanning is really one that's important. We want to check that if we believe in our environment uh, as a measure of security or, or otherwise, maybe obfuscation, that we want to look for um, unstandard ports. If, if you're looking for SQL and you think that it's on 1433, great, but if it's something else and, and you need to know that it's in some other port ranges, then you want to check that enhanced scanning to enable that port discovery. And my comment on this is everyone should be checking that. It, it, sure, it may take the scan a little bit longer, but it's just going to be that much more thorough. Um, you know, SQL not running on standard ports is uh, very, very common, especially when non-server administrators are building these servers. So if we're trying to find things that we don't know about, uh, we want to especially check that box. Absolutely. Thank you for chiming in, Brian. Uh, next on the list as we move down is our port configuration, and if we do have specific ports that we know they're running on and want to check them, we can add those in the list here. And then lastly, under the new entries configuration, it's important to note these, uh, these object variables that you can set up. Uh, if you have a naming convention that you need to specify uh, for these templates or, or a service convention that you have uh, gone through the trouble of configuring, you'd want to specify those objects here so that they fall in the results of the scans. Our next tab across the top is our credential tab. The credential tab is where you can put in your OS credentials or DB credentials if those are standardized in your environment, and these will help in returning the results of the uh, OS version, the database versioning um, that the scan is looking for. Uh, Robert, we have a question here. Uh, what if I don't know the OS or uh, database credentials right now? So if you don't know the credentials, you wouldn't add them here, and it will go ahead and dis discover the service, and it will try and identify the type of service and the ports that it's running on, uh, but it won't be able to get you versioning information for either of those. We'll see those results a little bit later as we run through uh, this demo. So it's not necessary, but if you're looking for that, uh, that, that added value in your scans, go ahead and add the credentials, but not necessary if you don't know them. Is that something we could do just later, do a first initial discovery, find that the box or the database exists? then go and get the credentials after the fact? Absolutely. So the, that's an important distinction to make at this point is that this is a service discovery, right? We want to discover the databases that are out there. Once we've discovered them, then we can run our, uh, our classification scan that really tells us what kind of data is out there. And so those credentials certainly can be added later to enhance the, the results. Uh, moving on to our scheduling tab, um, if this is something that you need to do because of compliance on a regular basis, 
uh, SecureSphere automates that process. You can set up a schedule, whether it's just something you want to run once, whether you want to have a recurring schedule, and you can specify that interval and when it starts from, and uh, the time that you want it to run at so that it doesn't impact um, the, your, your workload uh, during the day or, or when there's off hours, you can set this to run. We'll leave it blank for none now because we're going to run this manually. And the last tab is the history. If this is something that you are running at re regular intervals, you, you want to know about the, the job itself. Did the job succeed? Were there any errors? Um, so this isn't where we look for the results necessarily, although there will be a link in here once we run a scan to get to the results, but really about the process and the job that we had configured this scan, um, discovery service scan itself. Uh, next, we want to go to, um, go ahead and run that scan. So let's, let, we've, we've configured it, we, we put in, um, what services we're interested, we've identified our server subnet, let's go ahead and run that and then we can look at the results when that has completed. So for example, Robert, would, would a customer go forth and kind of create that configuration that we've done up until this point and then schedule the scan to run on a you know weekly or monthly basis and then all they need to do is go in and check the results on a regular basis, they don't need to reset that up from scratch every time, right? Correct, so if that's a scheduled scan and, and it, uh, if you feel confident that you want to protect those results, and come back and, and look at them later, you, you'd want to check the box to automatically add them to the SecureSphere configuration. Um, but yeah, once this is set up, you don't need to come back in and, and tweak it unless you're looking for something different or uh, you're possibly adding um, uh, servers to it. Um, one thing that I failed to mention would be that when we were creating our objects and our, our IP groups, it would be a good idea to either group them together if you wanted to do kind of a an uh, all-inclusive deal or to separate them out if you wanted some granularity. Maybe there's some um, IPs that you want to scan separately or have a different configuration for, you'll need to, to, to pull those out and set up those IP groups a little bit differently. And in a real environment with broader subnets, this scan's going to take quite a bit of time, right? So you're probably not going to be sitting here staring at the console. Just schedule it, kick it off and run, let it run in the background, just check on the results, you know, you know, hours later or just at a different time. That's correct. It will take uh, quite a bit longer depending on the size of your environment. So you do want to schedule that to run in, in off hours. Uh, here is the result of our scan that we kicked off manually. Um, from this uh, dialog box, we can go ahead and click into the results and take us directly there. Um, or we can acknowledge it, and I'll show you that you can get to it from our data classification tab and under our discovered servers tab. So uh, this ran, hey, we, we discovered some servers. Lo and behold, there, there are some things out there that, that are not in our secure sphere configuration. Looks like we have... Um, some hosts that are or that it thinks are Windows hosts and that has maybe some SQL services running on it, MS SQL on 1433. Uh, it looks like there may be a, a Linux server there uh, that might be uh, running some services that we're interested in protecting. So here are the results of these scans. Um, by default, the, the filter is always set to the last scan true only. So if, if you'd run multiple scans and, and you were looking for something other than this, you'd want to uh, clear that filter. But this is accurate for what we've done, and here are the results. Now the important column and what we're looking at here is the action column. So as we look at these scan results, the action column will determine how we mitigate this information to protect it. So let's take our um, this IP, the 10.13.150 uh, that has this SQL service running on that port, and let's let's accept that as a positive result. That's something that I agree that I should be protecting. Uh, the, the choices we have here are to, to the pending one, which is uh, the state it's in after the scan, whether we reject them, saying this is information we know is out there, but we're not interested in adding it to our configuration, and accepting being we want to add this to our configuration so that we can work with this object. Very important that after you've made any changes in this field that you save. <clears throat> And when we saved it, uh, we noticed that the server group was something a little bit different. And this is based on those um, object variables that were in the scan. So we told it that we wanted it to name the server group uh, by the IP. Uh, if we were interested in changing that, for example, if we have another SQL service down here that we want to protect, but we need to add it into our current configuration and current server group under what we have already configured, then, then we'd add that in there under the server group option. We'll go back to that column and we'll hit accept to add that in there. And again, once we've made that changes, we make sure to save it. Uh, let's see, did that not take? 
click that one more time, accept and save. All right, so uh, we've, we've accepted these results. Uh, this is the first step in, in the mitigation process. If we come back to our site tree under the setup tab, we'll notice that we have that new server group that was the default um, object that we created, and we have a new MS SQL service there. <clears throat> and under our existing uh, SQL service, we added in a second server there as well. So simply by checking these boxes and running these scans, we've taken a huge step forward in, in mitigating these hidden risks that we didn't know about. Being in these server groups now, we have the same web application firewalls, our uh, network validation protocol policies are now in place and protecting these servers. Uh, we can come up and, and uh, verify that in our um, site tree by looking at these server groups and looking at the servers that are listed. There's that new IP, 150, the Windows OS. Here's the second one that we added in under our existing server group, and it's now listed. 153 was its IP, and it's Windows operating system as well. So, Robert, we've, we've successfully found this, which is, you know, a huge part of the process. But, uh, you know, what would be a quick overview of what the next steps would be? Now, now that I've found this database that, you know, uh, I don't necessarily know what data is on it, what, what would be the next steps to potentially protecting this, uh, this data? Excellent question. For that, we would go back to our data classification scan management tab. Under here, we have uh, some scans that we, our database classification scans that were already running in the environment. And the next step to apply these same uh, policies and um, filters to the data that we want to scan for is simply to pick the one that you want to uh, apply to, hit the apply to tab, and under our current environment, we would simply add in our new servers that we found. That can be done here with a, a simple checkbox. Looks like they have been applied by default. And this is where you make the change to, to finishing that next step. But that's an excellent question. All right. There they are. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that, uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I'd like to thank Robert for giving us a run through the console for finding those uh, rogue databases. Um, you know, this is just a tiny snippet of what the, the tool really can do and hopefully gives you a little taste test on, uh, you know, how to do that service discovery. Um, if you have any more questions or concerns or, or, or need some assistance setting this up, you know, please reach out to uh, NCSI, uh, your salesperson, or hit the website and uh, ask for some contact. We will be happy to follow up with you, kind of teach you how to do this in your environment. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to help. Uh, we're also recording this and putting it on YouTube, so please check our YouTube channel to um, you can come back and fast forward and rewind to kind of see the different steps that we went through um, as we got to this point. But uh, I appreciate everyone attending, and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.